the Chase Thomas Podcast. For people who have nothing but time to kill. Jalen Milrow sounds like the guy um, at Alabama. And I just, that's that's alarming to me. I think um, this the most overrated storyline, I think, of this offseason, for one, is Nick Saban smiling at press conferences. Oh, he, he Thank knows you for how, saying that. He Why knows how good his that? team is because he's smiling at press conferences. Okay, cool. We have no idea what was said. Who's who knows what what happened? Or he's just but. getting old and he's not taking it seriously anymore. <laughs> like maybe that's just it. He's maybe. not as miserable as he once yeah. was. Um, so that that for one. But this idea that oh they don't have the wide receivers and the elite quarterback play. Oh they're just going to go back to being what the AJ McCarron era. Like we're just going to pound the rock and and play elite defense and, and win games thirteen to ten. It's like. If they could be holding opponents to 10 points right now, they would be doing it. Like, mm. the the most critical part of playing that style is you have an elite defense, and they haven't had that. Like, Kevin Steele has been a really good defensive coordinator in, in his time in, in college football, but he's a first-year defensive coordinator. Like, he's, he's going into a room with just about as much talent as most teams in, in the country – but Alabama hasn't been like the this elite of elite uh, team defensively. Like I think best case scenario is 2017. Like Jalen Milrow is pulling a 2017 Jalen Hurts, and he's he throws like 15 touchdowns, one or two interceptions, and has like seven eight hundred yards rushing. I mean, with how Milrow plays, he'd probably have like a thousand yards rushing. This guy looks like an absolute beast, but. I, I mean, there's a chance the offense, like, you have to do that by necessity, and they and you're Alabama, and you can win a lot of games that way because you have better players than a lot of teams you're playing. But I think when they're playing the best teams, like, Nick Saban himself has said it's like an outdated style of play of just playing defense and trying to hold the other team's offense. Like, you have to outscore teams. So I just – I question their ability. If Jalen Milrow is truly the guy and they – went to get oh man i'm blanking on buckner they went to get buckner Buckner in the um after the spring it's just like say what you want that's a red flag like you're not going to get another quarterback after spring practice if you're solid with your quarterback situation so i think the fact that um ty simpson hasn't run away with it like it's not an indictment on ty ty simpson what is he a redshirt freshman is he a redshirt sophomore Uh, Um, redshirt freshman so, I mean, this guy could get better, but I think a lot of people wanted him to be the guy, the five-star, just inherent, the team, big arm, whatever, uh, prototype quarterback coming out. I think a lot of people wanted it to be him. So the fact that you're still hearing a lot about Milrow, I think, I don't think is a good sign for for uh, Ty Simpson. No, I think no matter what, this feels like it's bad for Ty Simpson. And clearly that if it is going Milrow Buckner, then they want a mobile guy. Like clearly there's a the part of it with Tommy Reese and his history at Buckner gives him a leg up. But also to me, now it feels like they want to run the football and they want to take the ball. It's like they're going the antithesis of what they did last year with Bryce Young. Or the last two years, where everything revolved around Bryce being Bryce, and that was the best core I I mean, we could argue about this, but I would still rather have last year's Bryce Young than last year's Caleb Williams, and I would still take Bryce Young uh, for any given Saturday over Caleb Williams. Um, just with what I mean, I would say so. I think Bryce Young is best player in college football. Just didn't yeah. have the best season. Yeah, uh, I agree. And look, he's not walking through that door. Saban wants to run the ball, and we'll see what that looks like. The Smash Mouth, uh, Smash Mouth Murder Ball, all that. That's great. That's something you say in the off season because people can't really call you on it yet. Like, that sounds great. Okay, cool. Like, whatever that means in 2023, here's what we know, is that they are going to face some high-powered offenses. What we know is, I think, or I shouldn't say that. What we know is Tommy Reese is not a better offensive mind than Bill O'Brien. He's not better than Mike Loxley. He's not better than Lane Kiffin. He's not better than Steve Sarkeesian. That is a downgrade. He was not the first choice here. This was not some slam dunk. We got our guy. We brought him in from South Bend. Anyone who's watched the, the Notre Dame teams of the last couple of years were not like, oof, if Alabama gets their hands on this rising star in the industry, look out for the Crimson Tide. They're going to run the ball. Jaden Miller, we'll see what it looks like when they have to rear back, what they have to do when they are uh, like they're down 17-7 to 7 against Tennessee with an offense that is going to put up point after point after point. 
Are you still going to play that style? Is that style sustainable against the big dogs? Or if you fall behind against an LSU team, who's going to be very good again with a high-powered offense themselves? Auburn is going to have a high-powered offense. They're, they should be fun. I don't buy this stuff, that they are going all that way, that everything's settled, that everything's good, Nick Saban's smiling. We're all, like, there are people picking the Alabama Crimson Tide to win the national title because of all of this, because of the vibes to this offseason and that the revenge stuff and everything else. I don't think any of that's coming. Where was the their revenge last year? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I I think LSU's better. I think you could easily see AM being better. Georgia's obviously better. Tennessee, I think, could, pff, we'll see what that line looks like. They're, I think it's like eight or nine right now in favor of the Crimson Tide on the road, but we'll see what that looks like as the season goes on. But like, there's a case of the fourth or fifth best team in the SEC this year. And that wouldn't really surprise me. I think the days of them having the strangle stranglehold on this conference are behind us. And look, this uh, this last class that people like to throw out, best class ever, that's not really going to make the impact you think it is this year. That's something you see next year and the year after next. That's not something you'll see pay dividends right now. I don't see the guy, the playmakers out wide. I don't see the playmakers to do enough to be an elite team that wins multiple playoff games that is able to build this offensive juggernaut with Jalen Miller where we have not seen it downfield with the playmakers who were just not the same guys that Alabama's had kind of like Clemson the last couple of years missing the Rogers and Rosses and Higgins and company on the outside what that looks like and how tough it can be when you don't have those guys out wide for these star quarterbacks I'm betting the under I think they are a 10 and 2 9 and 3 team I don't I don't see Alabama getting back and being one of the two best teams in college football this year and being the favorite to win a national title. I, d I don't see it with the tide. I think they're going to be obviously very good. They have a 90% or something blue chip ratio this year, yeah. which is a, a record. Like they're going to have talent. I just don't think they're going to maximize it. I don't think this offense is going to be elite. I think it's going to be kind of ugly and Alabama fans are going to get really frustrated because I think there's a case we see all three quarterbacks in different stages because they struggle at different times or guys get banged up. I'm not a believer in the Crimson Tide this year to the extent that like I think they can win the college football playoff. So I am going to say nine and three, ten and two, ten and two being their maybe max here for me. So I'm hitting mm. the under on the tide. I think um I think you made some excellent points. And don't get it twisted. They were they had the ninth ranked scoring defense in the country last mm -hmm. year, but we've grown up, we've lived in this world where they're just the best at everything, like every year. So when they're just a good unit it's it's alarming it's 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 noteworthy and bryce young was just like you said he was that's he's just special like bryce young i think is the best player who's maybe ever played at alabama to be honest like i think he's he's just he was a baller and he just made that team look a lot better than they were last year and i think i think you could argue last year was nick saban's worst team since 2010 like hmm. Like the two a year, uh, two his junior year, they lost two games, but two also got hurt, and it was Mac Jones starting uh, against Auburn down the stretch. So like, I feel like that team. We know how loaded that 2019 Alabama team was. It's just they lost to a great LSU team, and then you know their starting quarterback got hurt. Like this team was truly flawed, and played a lot of teams close, lost a couple of games because I, I love how people love to say. The, oh, the dynasty's over. They they lost one game by three and another game by one. Yeah, they those two teams that lost they lost by three and by one got the doors blown off them by the national champion last year. So it's not like you're just one point and four point three points away from a national championship. You're those teams weren't the best teams in college football, and usually that's all they lose to is oh that the team that beat Bama last year they were the best team in college football. So. Mm -hmm. I think you're just, they're they are not at the same level. We've never seen Nick Saban, since he got to Alabama, we've never seen them go three straight years without winning a national championship. And I think 2023 is going to be the year. I, I think they're just, they're not that team this year. I think they're going to be really good because their talent is going to just, like, like I'm, I'm people are probably gonna make me eat my words because they're gonna run the ball all over a lot of teams, but, when it matters the most, like you, we've talked about with teams like Georgia through the years that had a run first team, when it matters most, can that quarterback make the plays? 
And I'm not sure if Alabama has that guy. So I think they're good. I feel like it's still a 10 and two season, but you know, where do those losses come? Is it in, in conference or is it the Longhorns coming into Tuscaloosa week two? Like you talk about needing to get into a shootout, like that might be the best offense in college football this year. Like they're absolutely loaded. So I don't, I don't really see, and, and they have a pretty good defense too. So I don't see how they can match the firepower of someone like Texas. And then maybe even someone like LSU, who's just potentially playing that style of game managing dual threat quarterback and physical style and good defense. Like LSU could just do that style better than Alabama potentially this year. So I think um, I see a 10 and two season for Alabama. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go under. So we agree on that one. All right. Matt Green, let's go to the Auburn Tigers, maybe the most mercurial and difficult team to forecast here. Um, I think uh, among all the teams, seven and a half for the Tigers. Pretty high, pretty optimistic by the by Vegas and Hugh Freeze's first year. What say you? Do you think they hit the over and that they get to an eight and four, nine and three territory like uh, uh, maybe some might anticipate? Or are you going under? I like Hugh Freeze a lot. I think he's the perfect guy for Auburn. For whatever reason, they just didn't have the the guts to pull the trigger in 2020 like they wanted to. But he was the guy all along. Um, or 2021, what was Carson's first year? Um, the schedule isn't tough as far as out of conference goes. Like. 